a little while back and it hasn't been a great length of time but uh, we looked at life after death and you know this week I've seen more of that going on uh, I've had one person die that I got word on Friday I have several and another one uh, Earl Shirley Brubaker died here a couple weeks ago and then we have the uh, ones like uh, uh, Catherine uh, and Crawford, Sandy Crawford and Catherine, I don't know what her husband's, their, their last name is, but is waiting to die at any time and should he be dead already by now. Uh, Catherine, I mean, uh, Sandy said that she was holding on just by a string, so to speak. And then I just got word of the pastor at Lake Taps Community Church, the retired pastor now because he had to retire because of cancer, uh, was at the doctor's office and he just got word um, that he's got less than six months to live. And he was going to tell the congregation there at Lake Taps this morning that. And just all kinds of different difficulties and different deaths and near deaths and people that are not good. So I just wanted to look at look at this this morning and I realize it's not a Christmas message uh, but I think it's important that we take a look at it. A lot of these people are stepping into eternity very soon and uh, you know even a few months is very soon when you think of in light of think of in light of uh, eternity and how long it lasts. First Corinthians 15:19 says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most pitiable, or King James Version says, most miserable. Um, I'm glad that as believers we can have life more than just in, in this life. But uh, So I just want to look this morning at what happens to the unbeliever and the believer when their eyes close in death. Death uh, is a sense, death in a sense is the beginning of our eternal existence. Actually from the time we're conceived everyone saved or unsaved has eternal life. Not the kind of what we think of but they're going to live forever someplace either in heaven or in hell. And death is the beginning then of that. It's not subject uh, particularly to what we think about it, yet it's something we all face. Every one of us here is going to face death unless the Lord comes back and takes us in a rapture. Otherwise, we all face, we're all going to face death. We may dread death, but that doesn't change the facts that death is coming to all of us. Some of us by age sooner than others but you know what? That doesn't make, age doesn't make a whole lot of difference does it with our, our eternal uh, whether, we, whether we live or die uh, whether, when we die. Age doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Young people die, old people die but just by virtue of the older we get the more chance we have of dying. You know we might dread death and I, I can remember my dad saying and I, I agree with him on this. He says I'm not afraid to die but it's the process that concerned him. And I, you know I, I believe he's right. We don't know the process but we don't have to be afraid to die. And as a child of God we can look forward to death actually with great anticipation, knowing that what's out there. Uh, I have a, a song that I we've been her been hearing sung by uh, Bird Yeomans, and it's uh, whether I live 
or whether I die. Uh, I don't remember the exact wording. But God's with me if I'm alive. Or I'm a winner either way is the title of the song. And uh, whether we whether we live here, we can be a winner. Or if we die, we can be a winner. And God's with us no matter whether, whether we're here or there as Christians. But I believe... Uh, we're all going to die one of these days if the Lord doesn't come back first. So what happens when the unbeliever dies? First of all, the body and the spirit are immediately separated at death. When a person's eyes close in death, an unsaved person, their eyes close in death, their body and spirit are separated. Let me mention here that there are those who teach the false doctrine of soul sleep. And that's not true at all. That's anti-God. There is no such thing as a soul sleep. When an unbeliever dies, or a believer, but when an unbeliever dies, there is no soul sleep. Their body goes into the ground, and their, their soul goes into a place called Gehenna, and we have that in, in uh, Luke chapter 16. But before we get there, some teach in reincarnation, simply not true. Any teaching that people put forth is false if it can't be found in Scripture. Anything, I don't care what it is, if it can't be found in Scripture, it's false. The body, the spirit, and the body will be immediately separated for an un un unsaved person. The body returns to the ground. And again, both the believer and the unbeliever's body returns to the ground, to the dust when they die. This whole tense, wearing out, we know that, don't we? I think we're all pretty pretty sure that this old tent that we live in, and that's what, it, that's what the Bible refers to us as our bodies, as a tent. And it's wearing out, and uh, it's been living in corruption and begins to decay. Genesis 3.19 says, In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you are taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Psalm 104 verse 29 says, You hide your face, they are troubled. You take away their breath. They die and return to the dust. So when a believer or unbeliever, but we're looking at a, an unbeliever right now, dies, their body goes into the ground and decays and turns to dust. And from this point uh, forward, the unbeliever and the believer go separate ways. We, 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 we return to dust both but our lives go a separate way from there. And each follow their own eternal path that leads in two different directions. The unbeliever body stays in the ground until it's resurrected to stand before the great white throne. And uh, the believer, of course, will be re resurrected for a better purpose. But the spirit goes to a place called Gehenna. We see that in Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 34. 34 and if you're thir maybe it's 31 I can't 31 it looks like if you're familiar with that story uh, it's really sad that the people that say oh I'm going to hell and I'm going to have a lot of fun and stuff uh, they don't want to believe when an unbeliever dies he doesn't go to hell right away he goes to this holding tank and I like what uh, Adrian Rogers said about unbelievers in Gehenna they're like prisoners being held in jail until their sentencing. At that time, the judge will sentence them to, eat, to life in prison without parole. Gehenna is like jail and uh, life in prison. And then Luke 16 goes into more detail about that. But then the body and the spirit are reunited. It's at this time when the unbeliever will stand before the great white throne here on earth to be judged. And they'll be judged for what they did and what they didn't do 
but mostly what they did what they did about Christ over in Revelation chapter 20 Revelation chapter 20 verses 11 through 15 says Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away and there was found no place for them and I say and I saw the dead small and great standing before God and books were open and another book was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged according uh, to their works by the things which are written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it. The death and death in Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You know what's interesting to me, and I think we kind of, I was talking with somebody, and I don't I think it was my brother-in-law yesterday. When a person dies, let's just say, for instance, you lose a limb. A person with diabetes can easily have that happen to them. Or uh, some other body part you're missing or let's just say you're cremated when you die you're cremated or you are lost at sea God's not going to have any trouble putting the whole body back together and you get a whole body you're not going to you're not going to spend eternity in heaven with a missing leg or uh, some other body part missing if God made us from the dust he has no problem putting it back putting us back together again so even if we're lost at sea and some fish maybe gobbled us up, he's going to get us back together again and we're going to be perfect in that time. But the body and the spirit are separated. They're going to be brought back together. And it's at this time, the great white throne judgment, when these people are going to be cast into the lake of fire, or the Bible calls it, uh, hell is what the Bible calls it. Calls it, and I've heard people say, "Well, this is I, I'm I'm living in hell on earth, or this is hell on earth." They don't know what they're talking about. There's this is nowhere compared. I don't care how bad your life is here on this earth; it's nothing compared to what hell is going to be like. It's a horrendous place of torment for all eternity, not just for a day or two or whatever else but it's for all eternity it's a place of outer darkness a lake of fire and brimstone and gnashing of teeth Luke I mean Mark Matthew 13 42 Matthew 13 42 says and will cast them into the furnace of fire there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth you know, because it's outer darkness, you're not going to be able to see anybody there. When you're in hell, you won't be able to see anybody. You'll only be able to hear their moans and groans and gnashing of teeth and whining and carrying on. Uh, but you're not going to be able to see who it is or anything else. It's a place of absolute, absolutely no hope. What a sad... And that's going to be for all eternity, not just for a short time. But it's going to be that for all eternity. It doesn't sound like a place where I want to spend eternity. And these people that laugh and make fun of hell, they don't know what they're talking about and they're not going to want to spend eternity there too. But what happens when a believer dies? The body and spirit of the believer are separated. And like the unbeliever, their body and their soul are separated. And the, and the body returns to the earth from whence it came, from when it came, and the spirit immediately goes to be with the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter five verse eight says, We are competent, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. When a believer's eyes close in death, their soul immediately goes to heaven 
to be with the Lord. Their body stays here for a while, but their soul goes to heaven. For the believer, uh, the, the body rejoins the spirit at the rapture. We see that in, in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter uh, 4, verse 18. First Thessalonians chapter four verse eighteen. It just says there to comfort one another with these words. Death should not be a a bad time really for the believer. Uh, for the dead, those who have died, their body will rejoin the spirit at the time of the rapture and the dead in Christ will come out of the grave before those who are alive. That's what scripture teaches there. Uh, and this is an instantaneous thing. It says in the twinkling of an eye, and we can't even begin to imagine how quick that's going to happen. But both, of the, both those who have died in Christ and those who are alive in Christ at the rapture or receive a new body. Over in 1 Corinthians uh, 15. First Corinthians 15, uh, verses 47 through 54. The first man of the earth made of dust, the second man is the Lord from heaven as was the man of dust so also are those who are made of dust and as is the heavenly man so also are those who are heavenly and as we have borne the image of the man of dust we also bear the image of the heavenly man now I now this I say brethren and that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. But I tell you a mystery, that we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead, dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall, we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So, when the corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Death is swallowed up in victory. What an encouragement that we don't have to be afraid really to die and like I said I can understand the process but we don't have to be afraid to die I say we get a new body it'll be a body just like Jesus had uh, one that's uh, incorruptible one that's not like we have here in this life it'll be recognizable and not bound by gravity. I don't know what all that means. I know we're not we're going to be able to recognize each other when we get to heaven. Uh, as far as the gravity parts, I don't think we're going to be floating around. I don't know exactly what's going to happen there. But the scripture tells us that eye hasn't seen or ear hasn't hasn't uh, heard the things that God has prepared for them that love Him. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens there but uh, I know it's going to be an exciting time imagine Jesus trying to get a heavier person off this earth uh, I don't think he's going to have any problem but uh, you know what I'm saying he might have a little more trouble I, I actually he won't I'm just saying that with some of us chubbier people to get get us moving there. Anyhow, uh, the believer's works are judged in in 1 Corinthians 3, 
9 through 15. First Corinthians 3, 9 through 15. For we are, we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, you are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it, but let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay that which was laid is Christ Jesus. Now if anyone builds on this foundation with, with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, stubble, and straw, wood, hay, and straw, each one's works will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on uh, endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as uh, through fire. So the things that we do here on this earth are going to be judged as believers. We're going to stand, it's called the judgment seat of Christ, and uh, the things that we do in the flesh are going to go up in smoke. The things that we do in the spirit are going to last for eternity, and that's what we'll get our rewards based upon that. will be rewarded with something that will last for eternity. And the believer will reign with Jesus for a thousand years. I don't know all that this means, but God's word says we will reign with him for a thousand years here on earth. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 12 says, If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Revelation 5.10 says, And we have and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. And Revelation 20 verse 6 says, Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection, over which the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him, a thousand years. Again, I don't know what all that means, but I do know that that's what God's Word says, and so that's the way it's going to be. Are you going to be one of those that are going to reign for a thousand years? I trust that we will. And then, last, the believer enters heaven to spend eternity. And what will we do for all eternity? I don't know. But we'll enjoy whatever it is. You know, I was just talking again to my brother-in-law yesterday, and, and uh, it says there in John 14, 1 through 3, he says, Jesus says he's going to prepare a place for those that love him, uh, a dwelling place or a mansion, depending on what your version says. My question to him was, and it's just something to chew on, why will we need a dwelling place if there's no night there and we're not going to be families anymore we're going to be individuals there I don't know I, I don't have the answer to that but it's something to, that I have thought about we won't be floating just floating around on cloud, clouds playing harps like people try to uh, make us make people think that that's what we're going to do and because of that they don't want to go there uh, that's not going to be the case we're not going to be doing that like the songwriter said, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Amen. Yep. And God's word says in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, says, But as it is written, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. What a, what a tremendous thing that will be. I have no idea. I mean, we read a couple of things about what heaven's going to be like, but uh, 
Beyond that, we don't know. The question this morning is, are you going to be in heaven? Or you will you be spending eternity in hell? You know, the choice is, each, is up to each one of us. And we only get two choices. You know, there's some that teach all kinds of goofy lies, which are not true. But the choice is up to each one of us. And the question is, which have you chosen? Heaven or hell? If you say, yes, I want to go to heaven, but how do I get there? The answer is very simple. You need to recognize, first of all, you're a sinner, and then you need to recognize that Christ died on the cross for you, and then you need to recognize, because you're a sinner, you need to repent and accept the work that Christ did on the cross. We all know John 3.16, I'm sure, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God made salvation so simple that even a child can accept, accept him and go to heaven. I trust that we've all done that. If we haven't, tomorrow may be too late. The Bible tells us today is the day of salvation. If you hear, don't harden your heart like they did in the Old Testament times but tomorrow may be too late. So it's up to us, each one. And as we think about communion, which is what we're going to have this morning, we, uh, we need to think about what he did for us there on the cross. And it's so important that we not only just think about it, but that we respond to what he did for us. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11 verse 